let's talk about five small box games you need to have. Hey, welcome to the Board Game Closet. My name's Jimmy, and today I'm doing five small box games you need to have in your collection. Now, you can clearly see all five of these games right here, so you don't have to scrub ahead in the video and fast forward to try to see what I'm gonna talk about. These are the games. So if you already know about these games, or if you think these are terrible games, then you can just click off, that's okay. But to my people out there that uh, are interested in hearing more about these games, then follow along with me. Now, these five games are part of our push to 5,000 subscribers. So we're running a contest right now for everybody who watches our YouTube channel. If you are a part of the 5,000, then you are entered in to win. So once we hit that 5,000 mark, we'll go through all of our subscribers, pick one lucky person, and then we'll ship them out. So if you're interested in that, click that subscribe button. So let's dive into these five games that I think that you should own. The first one was actually sent to me by Ed Baroff. He owns Pencil First Games, and this, I'm, I'm thinking this was one of his first games, if not the first game that he ever designed. Him and another guy named Thomas Denmark. And so this game is called Murder of Crows, and it's a very simple card game. And the basic idea of this game is that you have to spell out the word murder in front of you. But in order to do that, you have to play a card in front of you. And so when you play each one of these cards, each letter of murder does something completely different. So you might be able to take a card from somebody else or stop something. And so once you play a card in front of you, which is how you win the game, you're going to be spelling out this, this word murder, then the other people around the table are going to be affected by that. But they can discard a card from their hand to stop that. And so it's a very simple draw a card, play a card kind of a thing. And so you do that. If you spell out murder, then you win the game. But there is a whole lot of back and forth if you like those kinds of games where it's like okay I do that and I'm about to win and then somebody says haha but wait it's got a lot of that going on in it and then at the end of the game it does this really cool thing let me see if I can spell murder mur how do you spell mur murder murder with an r where's another r at so it does this cool thing i don't know if you played the game gloom where it tells a story but here it says a musky odor clung to the earth on ravenwood drive when maddock manchester with a burning vengeance used weed killer to poison abigail lestrange so it does that so you you basically get to tell your story at the end of the game and act it out or whatever you want to do we normally just play the chaotic crazy and then read the story at the end. And so that's Murder of Crows. And my only thing I will say is I don't know how readily available this game is, but if you can find it, it is worth picking up. Second is called Fox in the Forest. Now this is a trick-taking game. And I picked this up specifically because my wife, her mother and father, they all love to play spades. And so I was looking for something that would be a gamer's version of a trick-taking game. And this is a very simplified version of that. It's two players only, which is another reason that I picked it up, that me and my wife could play this together. But it's a very simplified version of that, is I play a card, you play a card, the higher one typically wins. But in typical game, or fashion, they had to add in some special abilities to these cards. And so all the odd number cards, the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, have special abilities that add to them. Like a 1, if you lose this trick, you might lose, but then you get to go first the next round. Or a 5 lets you draw a card. And so typically in, in trick-taking games, what you got is what you got. Well, in this one, uh, it's totally different from that. I think it's a 7 allows you to change the, uh, or a 3 allows you to change the trump card which is huge for uh, trick-taking game people that uh, the trump could actually change in this game. And then the biggest twist to the whole thing, and it's why I really, really love it, is that at the end of a round, you are going to add up how many tricks that you have taken, and then there's a chart that tells you how many points you get from that. So it's a really unique idea that you're not trying to get all of the tricks. And so there's actually a way if you got all of the tricks, you would lose, or not lose, but you get zero points for that round. And so so that's a way kind of like in in trick taking games when you want to go nil and you say I don't want to get any then uh, that's kind of a way for you to play against your opponent where you say I want you to get all the tricks this time and then you'll get zero points and then I'll get six points it's a race to 21 points whoever gets there first is the winner this is a great great game 
Next up is an oldie but a goodie. This is Biblios by Steve Finn. I love Steve Finn. I love his designs. I love the the smoothness of the games that he designs. They are they just play. Some games you have like a thousand different rules. Uh, this game is just a great great game. It's a classic. This is put out by Yellow. Uh, this is an awesome awesome game. And so in this game, it is a two phases two phases of the game. There are these dice in the game that basically are just uh, markets prices for the markets. And one of the cool thing about this is that the only points that you will score in this game are at the very end based off of who has the most red cards, yellow cards, green cards, and then the values on the die when the game ends. And so there are two phases of the game. The first game, the first phase is just drafting. And it's a really cool mechanism where you have to make these difficult choices. I keep a card or I could place it down here or I could put a card into the auction pile. Once you choose one of those locations, you can't take another one. So a good card comes up and you say, okay, I'll take that. But then an even better card comes up and now you're forced to place it in one of the other areas, even in the public space where one of your opponents will take it or into the auction space. Once all the cards have been done, then you're going to go through and now you have an auction phase of the game. And so all the cards that were put into the auction, now you're going to try to bid on those. So you might have placed really amazing cards in the auction pile. And so now in the second phase, you're trying to use money to get those cards or cards to get money vice versa i don't want to get bogged down in the rules very simple to understand and by the time the game is over it comes down to very simple numbers you know i got three you got four and i just i think it's great i think there's a reason that this was uh just published and published again and reprinted it's just a great little game and you need to have this in your collection okay next up is gearworks now this is by peacekeeper games and we were sent this copy in this game you are laying out a grid and you're trying to place cards down in the grid so that you can at the end uh, collect these cards or these icons to complete these um, mechanisms. So it's got this steampunk kind of feel to it, but there is such tension in this game on where I want to place a card and when a row is filled, then that's it for the round. And so if you can imagine this grid type thing where you're placing cards down and you're wondering which one should I place down and where, there's some rules on numbers. They have to be in ascending or descending order. They can only be certain colors that are done in each column. And so it's a really neat mechanism on you are forced to place it in a certain spot, like figure out the puzzle, where can I place this card and get the icon that I want? It's a lot of fun. And so uh, this is one that I think might have got overlooked. And so if you are into... I don't want to say it. a lot of people compare it to Sudoku or however you say that word, but I don't know if I necessarily would compare it to that other than there's only one spot to maybe place a card and you kind of have to do that. You don't have to, but that's the ideal place to do it. Anyways, if that sounds interesting to you, then Gearworks should be on your list. Last, finally, top five games, five small box games. Here's number five. This is this is one that my family, my, my son, who is seven, eight, seven at the time, now he's eight, he loses his mind over this game. And this is a push your luck game of trying to ascend to the highest cloud. And the way that they do it in this game is they have like nine different levels of islands that you are floating towards. And each round, somebody is the captain. And uh, if you progress to the next level, the next person is the captain. And on your turn, when you are the captain, you will roll dice and the icons that are come up on those dice, you have to draw or discard cards from your hand that match those icons. And so if you are not the captain, you have an option to either jump ship and get out of here and take a card from that level, or you stay on and push your luck and hope to go to the next level. Because the higher you go, the more valuable the cards are and the quicker you get to victory. The first person of 50 points wins the game. And there are some special ability cards. There's even expansion out for this. I don't own that. But uh, just the base game alone has tons of fun. We take this every time we go out of town and we will play round after round after round of this. I cannot recommend Celestia enough. It's a great game. So you tell me, maybe these are not in your top five games, but maybe there's something else that's in there that you think would be great. And I don't know if this is my top five, but these are just five small box games I think you should own. So let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope you win the contest.